to see you guys this morning. I've got a story for you that every parent needs to listen to this morning. Today, there are growing fears about that fast-moving mystery virus that is hospitalizing children in 46 states now. Colorado health officials just confirming that 10 young victims suffering from that respiratory illness have also developed symptoms of paralysis. They don't know if it's permanent or just temporary, but they are very nervous about it. The children range in age from 1 to 18. The CDC is now investigating to see if that new complication is linked to that virus outbreak. Thank you very much. You know, uh, yesterday at this time, we were telling you about how the President of the United States on 60 Minutes the night before had talked about how, you know, Steve Cross said, how did we miss the fact that ISIS has gotten so big? In fact, this morning, they're reportedly one mile from Baghdad. Well, the President said, you know, our intel community simply underestimated things. He threw them under the bus. Well, as it turns out, maybe he, the President, actually was missing it because, according to the Government Accountability Institute, the President only attended 42 percent of his daily intel briefings. That's where they tell him where the hot spots are. So if he only shows up 42 percent of the time, he's going to be missing a lot. Is that why he missed ISIS? But, oh, no. But he does say he reads them. He gets them on his iPad and goes through them. How do we know uh, he, he actually he, reads them? Uh, true. Uh, that's what I brought up originally when the story came out. Um, is he getting it? Is he going through it? And right. others said, well, he's a lawyer. He prefers it that way. That's very we typical of lawyers. To him. Probably. Eli Lake of the Daily Beast writes today that his sources at the Defense, uh, Defense Department are flabbergasted by the president's shift to blame. Others are speaking out, uh, including people that say, just read the testimony from past uh, Senate uh, Senate. Uh, committee meetings, like Lieutenant General Michael Flynn in February, and says Iraq and Syria seem to exhibit, uh, to uh, seem to be uh, exhibiting large sections, large sections of ISIS spreading through both regions, demonstrated recently by the fall of Ramadi and Fallujah. The writing was on the wall. Yeah. Everybody knew about it, and they were telling the president, but he did nothing. Right. Ed Henry actually asked Josh Ernest this because a lot of people were asking, wait a second, where is the accountability, and why so much blaming? Why did he use the word they? They underestimated. Why did he say we? Isn't Jim Clapper part of the president's team? Uh, of course he is. The president has confidence in, in Director Clapper. So if everybody in the U.S. government was surprised at that, nobody failed? Nobody's going to be held accountable? Well, Ed, predicting the will of foreign security forces to fight for their country uh, is difficult. Yeah, it's difficult, except the intel, uh, intel community said, look, we were giving the president and the White House detailed stuff before the election. Remember, before the election, that's when we heard Osama bin Laden is dead and al-Qaeda is on the run. Well, as we know, that narrative simply wasn't holding up. What's also curious is uh, just the fact that you've got people like uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. He's wondering... Given the fact that there has seemed to be no accountability, should somebody, Intel community elsewhere, should somebody's head roll? How does anyone listen to this? Well, we've heard How does a little anyone keep their job in the Obama administration? How does Lois Lerner keep her job and still get a six-figure taxpayer-funded retirement? How does anyone keep their job in the Veterans Administration? That's the entire fallacy of this administration in that no one is responsible. We continue to see these failures, these misunderstandings, these missteps, whatever you want to call it, and no one is ever responsible. How does Eric Holder keep his job after Fast and Furious? How does anyone keep their job when we abandon four Americans to die in Benghazi? That's the big million dollar question. Okay. A Fox News alert now, a live look here. This is Aaron Lewis, the man accused of murdering realtor Beverly Carter, making his way back to jail. We are told he was just in an investigation building. Let's listen in. Let's see if we can hear what he's saying. Okay, the door just closed. But he just, just did say... a live report there from Aaron he, Lewis this morning, just moments after he, he was He just said, was talking to a reporter as he got he put into the car, as we were just tossing out to him. Yeah, he is uh, set to be arraigned in just a couple of hours. Uh, apparently, uh, he was uh, arrested and he was uh, inter uh, interrogated for, I think, 12 hours. At that point, he did admit that he kidnapped the uh, real estate agent by the name of Beverly Carter. However, he did not admit that he murdered her. Uh, 
whatever he did tell the cops, so they were then able to go and locate her body overnight. That's right. He's going to make his first court appearance uh, at 9 a.m. Eastern. Right. This and is after he was recognized at that shopping center. In so the there you have uh, Aaron Lewis, uh, the perp walk. M meanwhile, just to wrap up what we saw from Lieutenant Colonel Alan West saying, okay, if you, do if you believe that uh, the National Intelligence Director, again, dropped the ball when it comes to ISIS, why doesn't anyone lose their job? Either you're all in it together or it's time to revamp absolutely everything. Right, and it's a 42 percent... Uh, attendance rate at these intel meetings good enough for you uh, as, as you're hearing that the president that those are the ones that he attended 42 percent that's nearly 60 percent of the time he opted out of sitting face to face with his intel and getting the information right. asking them questions back uh, maybe a little curiosity would have helped so one other curious thing uh, 60 minutes did uh, two-thirds of their program on the president of the united states it was the first two segments their ratings were actually down according to nielsen 69 percent from the week before was it because of football or was it because people didn't want to hear what the president had to say? Don't know. But Steve, they usually up because the lead, when the lead in's football, they usually skyrocket it because right. it's uh, in the East anyway, they run late. So the, the start time usually uh, increases their ratings.